Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are diving into um, custom filament filters in Laravel filament. Uh, so, basically, filament provides three types of filters. By default, we can use select filters, tunnel filters, and query builder. So, I have written an article about this. You can I will put the link in the description. You can check this part and besides that uh, today we will be exploring the part of custom filters so for that what we are creating is we'll be adding a filter here uh, in our product resource where we'll show the filter for price range filter so we'll have two fields let's say from initial price to final price or from to range of price and on that basis we'll just uh, try to filter the data right so let's start so here I am in the product resource page inside the filters method so here what I need to do is first of all I need to import the filter and let's say name it's now label itself okay let's say price range filter so here we'll have two things we'll have first of all the from right so if I will refresh here now here is my filter icon so now the form will contain two fields so let's say text input and make let's say from price mm, and then let's say to price right let me refresh yeah from price and to price uh, let me just make both of them sorry oh my bad to price and then make, let me make both of them numeric right so yeah okay they are numeric for now so now so after that what we need is the logic so for that we will just change the query method where we will get the first parameter is our query and the second parameter is our data and for this we need to run return the builder method okay so i mean we need to return the data on the basis of query right so what we are doing is we are now this query means our global query or any other filters so so what we'll do is return the query right so we'll just use the when method so when means first of all we'll have value so, so let me just say uh, when how is this works is what we need to do is let's say if dollar data uh, from price right if it's set let's say yeah this one or anything like this if the data is set from the price then we'll just use the filter right like this we'll just return this so this can be reduced by using the single when method we'll just change the when which will first require the uh, value for let me just add semicolon first of all first the first parameter is if you see the value right it should be true so what will it, what it should be our data let's say it said dollar data uh, from price right if this value is there then we'll just use the uh, callback method here so the first callback method will use uh, we'll get the query as well as we'll use that price or we can simply use this dollar query where price price should be greater or equals to dollar price right so let me just uh, make this below okay to for you clear okay so here what i have done is first of all i have set the value so if price is set then only it will return this so we'll, it, this help us to uh, reduce the part of checking for the conditions if i'll just refresh here let us try 
so let me let us say we have 14 results uh, let's say uh, above 500 let us try if it works or not okay i don't think it's working mm -hmm. okay okay let's first uh, implement for the part of two price also right i need to remove this the logic should be almost same two price if there is two price then query should be less than equals to that price right let us try 500 2000 5000 Mm -hmm. we have a the price of different ranges let's say thousand no our filter is not working so what we have done the mistake here do we need to type in this that we are returning builder filter is applied but it's not working if we say from the price range filter to price on rate it's just still not working why if we'll just do the data from price maybe it is taking the truth value not the not the value of that i think that's the reason because it said will return either true or false let us try yeah now it's working thousand yes we have now the price right so if we just do two thousand now we will get the price of two thousand yeah that was the problem because it was since we are using the price as a second param so it was returning either true or false that's the case okay so after that i think the filter is now working but we need to indicate the filters right similar uh, to when we are using the normal filters right so for that uh, we can just use the indicate using method we can just change it indicate using <coughs> it will have a callback right i think we in here also we can get the data not query we don't need query we will just get the data right and it should return the type of string okay so here Mm, I think uh, I'll just copy this and I will explain you this will be much more easier okay so what we have is we can use multiple indicators so let's say we have the from price and to price and for this each we are using the different indicators right so indicators means if you remember if we use any default filters here like if I use this then it will just show us here right so for that now if we have from price right we have from price then what we'll do is we don't need this okay from price we can just use like this then then we can chain data from price right and uh, i'll just uh, explain you about this remove field in a second let me just uh, remove this for now so yeah here you can see let me just add the message refresh this yeah from price 500 so it's the single method right if i walk, try to open this it will not work because we have not implemented that here so here it will be two price if there is two price then we will use 
filter like uh, to price space dot data to price right and then remove field means it will help us to control over the filters right if i will do this this will remove the field means this will set this value to null so here it should be to price okay okay so here you can see so if i'll remove this now this if you check here it is null level that is what we can do from remove field and we can also control above the removable sorry remove i think removable which is by default too if i will do false you see the there is a cross icon here if i will refresh now we can't remove that i we just need to modify from here we can do this and you can see the changes are reflected directly there but we this is by default true so this is how we can add the custom icons so besides this uh, there are a lot of layouts of filter so let us uh, quickly check that so we can pass the second pair params in the filters method the first one is the area of filters and the second parameter is filter layout so we can use filters layout if you see here one two three four five four five six there are six methods right so the default one is drop down that is currently here right we are just using the drop down filter so besides this you can use above content okay so this will make this to come above the content and also above content collapsible is there so means so now so this this can be collapsed open or closed on the basis of clicking on this icon so after that we have below content which will show the filters below and also we can also show the push filter on model so if we click on filter so it will come on the filters so uh, you can also check out more things like uh, using how much for field uh, form fields or how many form fields you want in a row or columns you can also control over them so this is for this part